In Black Arts 2, you will have to go up against a lot of different enemies on huge battle maps, and you will probably already know some of the monsters from the first game. But there are a lot of completely new challenges waiting for you. You will have to bring down four wizards that have magically created new monsters. These creators are the ones who provide Marwan with unnatural beasts like the Louse Queen in the first Black Arts game. But they did not stop at just one monstrosity. There is Tikatis, for instance, a classic villain without morals, obsessed with the secret of beauty and the art of creation. But himself, he forms disgusting patchwork creatures out of dead flesh. He is the one to create the so-called leapers, bizarre creatures made of skeleton parts and raw muscle. They can jump across the battlefield and crush enemies beneath them, dealing a lot of damage and possibly throwing units of walkways and bridges. If a unit actually ends up trapped underneath, the leapers will suck the life out of them, regenerating their own vitality. Putting all your heroes close together on the same spot can prove to be deadly in a fight against these creatures. Unlike the undead leapers, the sand ghosts are made of sand. A man named Adamant created them following an ancient Tulamedian tradition. Sand ghosts can attack a single target with a ranged attack of flying sand, or they can create a sandstorm which will knock down several units in a row. In this form, they can move quickly across the map. In melee fights, they are able to swallow a whole unit and hold it inside until they are killed themselves or begin a storm attack, dealing damage to the trapped unit each round. The great weakness of the Sand Ghosts are magic attacks. Shina al Shina, the mother of insects, is probably the most weird among the mages serving Marwan. She came up with a rather far-fetched idea to merge humans with insects. The resulting creatures are intelligent, sometimes able to fly and have four arms which often wield a longsword. Some of them also use different combinations of weapons, bows, daggers or two-handed weapons. A very rare breed is able to cast spells. The flying breed is, of course, extremely fast. They rely on their chitinous armor, which allows them to ignore a lot of damage. A targeted stab, which ignores armor, is a good way to deal with them. <laughs> the tree-like creatures called Jasper Wood have been created by a mage only known as the Druid. He combined trees with animals and machine parts and so allowed them to move across a battlefield and batter down enemies with huge wooden fists. Their ranged attack can come as a surprise. They dig into the ground and send metal-tipped roots through the earth. Because of their nature as plants, these tree creatures are extremely hardy. They can throw enemies back with heavy attacks and deal a huge amount of damage. Jasperwood is protected on all sides by beehives, which have to be destroyed before you can attack the tree creatures directly. And the best way to do this is with fire. All these creatures have one common weakness. Without extra precautions, they only follow the orders of their creators. To allow Marwan and his armies to use the Chimera in battle, the Chimerologists had to create a control spell. To this end, they built the so-called Hell Organs, music instruments whose sounds force the Chimera, tree creatures and undead monsters to follow the will of the one who plays the organ, as long as he or she knows the melody needed. And even then, the magic will only work if the monster is inside a magic circle that is connected to the organ. If you have to go up against these new enemies, prepare for their tactics and abilities, or go and find the melodies to control them. Then you only have to lure the creature into the right position to take over control and use their powers of destruction for your own goals. <laughs>